This is Ron Kessler for Newsmax TV, and we're here with Joe DeGeneba, the former U.S. attorney in Washington, who is a noted commentator on legal issues and political issues, much sought after by the media. Thank you so much for being with us, Joe. Delighted to be, to have you here. <laughs> what is your take on these national security issues? Uh, this is very serious business. It's serious for a number of reasons. First of all, they've compromised sources and methods in an apparent attempt, and may I say an obvious attempt, to burnish the president's image. This is, this is really outrageous what has occurred. There have been a pattern of stories, not just a story, but a pattern of stories leaking, clearly leaking, sources and methods information in order to make the president look like he's a tough cookie. Now, uh, suffice it to say, that if the president authorized all of these people to speak either on background or off the record or on the record, then these are not leaks and they're not crimes because the president has the unilateral power to declassify. But if he did authorize these disclosures, he may not have a legal problem, but he has a very serious political problem, which means he has abused the power of the presidency for political purposes in order to burnish his image. And these stories have been a disaster overseas. Uh, we have just returned from the Middle East on a trip, and uh, U.S. officials overseas, and I will not name the countries, have told us that they are frightened about the prospects of sources drying up because they fear that they will be disclosed by this administration for political purposes. This is very serious overseas. I don't know if you've noticed, but President Obama, in his denials of being involved in these leaks, has said that he would never release classified information. Uh, but, of course, by definition, if he released it, it would not be classified anymore. It would mean that it was now declassified and technically not even a leak. Um, I wonder if uh, that is something that might have been by design because he could have said that the White House was not involved in releasing any material and that would have been a complete flat denial. Nothing that this president does in this area is by accident. It was completely by design. First of all, when you look at the series of stories, they run over a set period of time. Not once during that time that these three or four articles were appearing did you hear an objection from the White House. Not from the press podium, not from the president, not from the national security advisor, not from the CIA director, not from the Department of Defense, not from the National Security Council. These clearly, as a result of that, were authorized leaks. The president was being cued at the news conference. Of course, he says he and his White House did not disclose classified information because apparently these disclosures were authorized by the president. And as I said, that may not be a crime, but for purposes of policy and politics and the protection of sources and methods and getting people to cooperate with us overseas, this has been a disaster. And, and I don't think it's something that's going to be ignored. And, and the reaction of the Democrats on Capitol Hill is a sign that they're deeply concerned about this. Not only that, if you're the Secret Service and the President of the United States has allowed the New York Times to write an article about his kill list where he gets his weekly or bi-weekly report in a binder which shows the people who are uh, putative targets for assassination by the drone program, either the DOD or the CIA. If you're the Secret Service and the New York Times has been allowed by the authority of the president to identify him, the president, as the decision maker about who gets killed, the Secret Service is saying, my God, they have just exponentially increased our job and our duty to protect the president and the risks that he has exposed himself to. You have to ask yourself, who is the adult around the president sitting him down and verbally slapping him across the face and saying, do you have any idea what you have unleashed? Do you know Al-Qaeda wants to kill Americans? Now, they probably want to kill you more than ever as a result of what you have done by allowing yourself purposefully to be identified in the article as the target master. The target master. Not only that, the article destroys the whole concept of plausible deniability which the United States government has built up since World War II to insulate a president from responsibility from, from certain acts which, you know, we don't talk about in decent company. Well, apparently, 
This president and his advisors have decided that this conversation about murder and mayhem is perfectly good for this president. It is, it is an amazing performance. It is beyond amateurish. Uh, it threatens the institution of the presidency by its boldness and its stupidity. What is the um, harm done by the article on the Stuxnet cyber warfare program against Iran? Well, the Stuxnet article revealed, uh, if it is to be believed, which apparently it is, that the Israelis were deeply involved with our people in designing the software which became the virus and led to the ability to corrupt the software programs in the Iranian nuclear uh, program. Uh, but it also led to identifying uh, the particular unit inside Israel which was responsible for the production and cooperation of this effort. It is just mind-boggling that anyone would think that these types of disclosures uh, would be helpful to the United States. The, the purpose of never confirming these disclosures, as we all know from our 40 years in intelligence and criminal law enforcement, is you have deniability. You have the ability as a country to say, well, we, we don't know anything about that. We, we don't talk about things like this. Well, apparently this president has decided they are going to talk about things like this. They're going to do the thing that we've all been told from our years in government. You never do. You don't talk about this stuff this way. You allow yourself to have the pleasant, the pleasantry of deniability, the ability to say with a straight face, to, to, you know, to go forward and lie for your country, as diplomats do every day, we don't know anything about this, we don't comment about intelligence matters, and here the President of the United States has clearly authorized people like Tom Donilon, John Brennan, and other people to talk on the record, off the record, uh, on background, about the most sensitive intelligence operations. And of course now, a Pakistani doctor is in custody under a 33-year sentence. We had to pull our Saudi informant who found the, the new underwear bomb. He's had to been removed from the country and brought to the United States, apparently with his family, for protection. This, if, if he weren't a Democratic president and the media were not so liberal and, and just, you know, in love with him, this would be a national scandal. It's getting there. It's getting, it's, it's getting there not because the media wants it to get there. The media wants to, to get away from it. But that's not going to happen. This is just too big. This is the kind of conduct that would lead to an impeachment in other times. If this were a Republican who were responsible for these leaks, he would be impeached. There would be talk of impeachment. Uh, I don't think you're going to hear that because the American people are not ready for it because they don't even understand the kind of damage that this president has done to our national security through authorizing these disclosures. Do you think um, people are going to want to cooperate with the CIA at this point? knowing that uh, the doctor in Pakistan and the Saudi asset in Yemen were both compromised by the CIA or by, um, by the White House. Uh, do you think that anybody would want to cooperate with the CIA at this point? We have created for ourselves the worst uh, scenario for, for our intelligence officials working overseas who are attempting to recruit foreign nationals to work with us and give us information. Those foreign nationals who want to help us now have second thoughts. Who will protect my identity? Will I be sacrificed like the Pakistani doctor or the Saudi informant on the altar of President Obama's re-election effort to make himself look good, to make himself look strong so he can fight the image of Democrats being weak on national security? People all over the world see this stuff. They read about it. They know what's happening. Uh, I think there's going to be a profoundly detrimental effect on, on, on our recruiting people overseas to spy for us. And finally, what is the role of the press in all this? Are these legitimate stories? On the one hand, uh, they don't reveal any abuses. They don't reveal any intelligence failures. In fact, just the opposite. They reveal that the intelligence agencies are performing their jobs very well, and yet at the same time, they compromise sources and methods and, and make it less likely that other countries will cooperate with us. Uh, so what is, in your view, uh, the purpose of writing these stories in the first place? Well, journalists, of course, have all sorts of motivations for writing stories. They want to be famous. David Sanger wanted to write a book, and he did. Uh, David Sanger of the New York Times, who wrote the Stuxnet book and the Stuxnet story for the New York Times. 
But there is no doubt on the record we now have before us that this has nothing to do with disclosing, uh, as you say, intelligence uh, violations of the law, uh, intelligence failures. These are all successes. Now, when's the last time you saw a bunch of reporters getting together to report successes of the intelligence community? It never happens. But it did happen in this case with this president because the media loves him, they support him, they want him reelected. They have become a part of the Obama reelection campaign. This disgraceful series of stories is nothing more than a campaign commercial for Barack Hussein Obama. This is Ron Kessler for Newsmax TV, and we so appreciate Joe DeGeneva being here with us today. Thank you, Joe. My pleasure. Delighted you're here.